Hello and welcome to Distress Tolerance 4. So as we normally do, I'm just going to focus on getting ourselves in the, the best mindset we can to get the most out of the video. And sometimes that comes from changing our position where we're watching the video, making sure we have everything to hand. So first of all, just check have you got a pad and a paper with you? Um, pens. Have you got the distress tolerance worksheets to hand? And we're using the Marshall Lynham worksheets and handouts um, for DBT. And in this session, we're going to be using handouts 11 to 11B, handout 12, worksheet A. Worksheet 9 and 9A, and the first third of Worksheet 10. So just pause the video, make sure you've got everything to hand. And then we're just going to look at our body position because sometimes, just to be alert, you just need to sort of shift around a bit, make sure you're feeling like your feet are firmly on the ground, your body is upright and alert so that you're in the best possible position in order to pay as much attention as you can. And sometimes it's really useful to just scan yourself from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. Just notice any discomfort and think about, do I need to move in any way? Okay, so let's begin. We're going to be looking at reality accepting skills. We're going to do this next week as well. So previously what we've been looking at are crisis survival skills, which we use to get through a situation um, without making it worse, or when we find ways of taking the edge off extremely high emotion so that we're able to utilise our emotion regulation skills and look at problem solving and fitting the facts. Reality accepting skills are really important when we are faced with painful facts that cannot be changed immediately. And sometimes those painful facts can't be changed ever. So we have to do something different um, when we are tolerating the distress of this. And part of this is a balance between acceptance and change. So these reality accepting skills are part of the accepting balance. And sometimes if we're able to accept things, we're also in a much better position to change things. And that means that we reduce our level of, of suffering and we also increase, increase our sense of freedom. Because if we accept things and we have a better picture of what's going on, then we're in a much better position to change things, to make things work better for us. So reality accepting skills. How easy do you think this is? On your bit of paper, if naught is really easy and 100% is the most difficult it could be, how difficult do you think it is to accept reality as it is? I always put that at the top in the in, in the um, 90s to 100s and it might be useful to just jot down as well times when you have been able to accept things maybe start with easier things first things that are a bit more manageable i tried making a list and i can honestly say none of those came in the below 50 percent so this this is a tricky skill to learn and it's a tricky skill because when we become really, really focused on what we want, when we um, think that we need something, it's very, very difficult to move away from that. We believe things should be a certain way or that the world should be a certain way or other people should be a certain way. And what we do is we fight against what, we, um, what might be happening um, in reality. So, 
The danger of that is that we don't see what we need to see. We certainly don't listen to what's going on around us. And we often don't speak out because um, if we spoke out about something, we would then have to um, accept that it was true, that that was the reality. So when we don't accept the reality for what it is, it stops us from seeing the bigger picture. And we can get caught up into behaviours that are really unhelpful for us. So I want to start with some really small things, some more manageable items um, that might help us um, look at what are the skills involved in, in accepting reality. Because if you can start with something that's manageable and work out what the process is in being able to accept that, then you can start working on the, the uh, more tricky um, areas of life that, that's more um, difficult to accept. So I don't know if you're familiar with this. There's a sitcom on at the moment called Mr. Winner. And um, th this particular scene, um, which to be honest, I think it's also been around um, social media as well. This particular um, scene made me laugh a lot because um, it took me a long time to accept that I had to pay for plastic bags. Um, so he goes into the supermarket and she asks him if he wants to pay for a paper bag. And as you can see, he manages to, to carry the entire week shopping um, in his clothing. Um, and um, if you get a chance to watch this clip, the expression on the cashier's face is, is just an absolute gem. It's a really good example, isn't it, of how when we dig our heels in, when we don't accept the reality as, as things are, that um, we make life very uncomfortable for ourselves sometimes. Sometimes it can also be quite dangerous as well. So an example that I have from somebody um, I, I know is um, when they, they got a new oven. So the, um, with the old oven and grill, you could close the grill door when you were grilling something. With the new um, oven and grill, you couldn't. And if you did, lots and lots and lots of really black smoke used to come billowing out of it. So despite the fact that the instructions said to keep the door open when you're grilling, um, this 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 person found that very very difficult to accept because as far as they were concerned the grill door should be able to be shut while you're grilling now this continued for many months and um, billows of black smoke regularly used to appear out of the top of the grill and that creates a fire hazard doesn't it so luckily they had fire they had fire alarm and luckily over a period of time um, they came to accept that actually the grill door really did need to be open however in the time that they weren't accepting that there was a fire risk it can be dangerous so sometimes when we refuse to see things as they are and continue to fight and demand that they are as we want them to be it can actually be really dangerous for us One of the um, really good examples that Marshall Linen writes about is um, the story about letting go of bananas. And um, so the story is, they say that there is a clever way to catch monkeys. I'm not saying this is an ethical story. A hunter can cut a hole into a coconut just big enough for a monkey to put his hand through placing two smaller holes at the other end and a wire through, you can secure the coconut to the base of a tree. The, they then place a banana inside the coconut, wait and hide. So the monkey comes down the tree, puts his hand in and grabs the banana. 
Now the hole is made so that the monkey's hand can go in, but a fist cannot get out. And the, so the monkey is caught. And here's the important bit. All the monkey has to do to be free is to let go. Because if the monkey lets go, he can slide his hand out quite easily from the coconut. However, what appears is that most monkeys don't let go. I think it's a really good example of sometimes we are able to remove ourselves from situations if we allow ourselves to let go of something. But we often don't. So despite our intelligence, our minds do the same thing. We struggle, we get stuck and we refuse to let go. And the first step towards freedom is noticing that we are grasping and clinging on. Then we're able to move towards letting go, accepting and ultimate freedom. Another really good example of accepting skills is the love your dandelion story. So let me read this through for you. Okay. So a man bought a new house and decided he was going to have a very beautiful lawn. He worked on it every week, doing everything that the gardening books told him to do. His biggest problem was that the lawn appeared to have lots of dandelions growing through them. The first time he found the dandelions, he pulled them out. Now, for those of you who are gardeners, I think you already know what's coming. But alas, they grew back. He went to his local gardening store and bought weed killer. This also worked for a time, but after the summer rains, the dandelions came back again. He worked and pulled and killed dandelions all summer. Can you see how much energy is going into this? I would also imagine he's getting a bit annoyed as well. The next summer he thought he would have no dandelions at all, since none grew over the winter. But then, all of a sudden, they all popped up again. So this time he decided the problem was with a type of grass. So he spent a fortune and had all new grass put down. This worked for some time and he was very happy. Just as he started to relax, dandelion came up. A friend told him it was due to the dandelions in the lawns of his neighbours. Can you imagine what that did for neighbour relations? So he went on a campaign to get all his neighbours to kill their dandelions. By the third year, he was exasperated. He still had dandelions. So after consulting every local expert and garden book, he decided to write to the US Department of Agriculture for advice. Surely the experts could help him. Can you see how determined he is? How much energy has gone into this? After waiting several months, he finally got a letter back. He was so excited. Help at last. Yay. He tore open the letter and read the following. Dear Sir, we have considered your problem and have consulted all of our experts. After careful consideration, we think we can give you very good advice. Our advice is that you learn to love those dandelions. I think it's a really great story, isn't it? of how we fight something that actually we're not able to change. We might be able to have some influence over it, but probably not much. So what is radical acceptance? I think it's a lot easier to say what it's not. And what's really important is that it is not approving or condoning of the reality. It is not having to like it. It is not having to believe that it is okay or it is right. 
But what it is, is it is accepting reality as it is. It's making sure that we look at the whole picture, that we hear everything that's going on and we feel free to voice whatever we need to voice. It means accepting all the way, even the really difficult bits. And that's what can be really hard because in order to do that, you have to let go of the bitterness of it. And it also is likely to bring some sadness because when we stop fighting things, when we stop trying to make things the way we want them to be, actually we have to then com confront the loss of that. So radical acceptance of the moment does not mean that it is right and it doesn't mean to say that you can't act to change the future. You only have to radical, radically accept the moment that you are in. It is letting go of what you want and desire, letting go of having to have what you want and radically accepting that reality is what it is. And I think a really good example of this is one that Marshall Lynham talks about as well, which is about um, concentration camps during World War Two and um, how people survived in those concentration camps. And there's um, a really interesting book out called The Tattooist of Auschwitz. Now, be, be aware when you're reading it that there is some controversy attached to the book. However, I think it's a really good example of how um, one man accepts that he is actually in a concentration camp and that the guards do have all the power. And in doing that, he has to accept that what is right, wrong or fair just has no relevance whatsoever. And it's really striking that people in concentration camps who um, weren't able to accept were in danger of losing their lives. Those who openly rebelled, insisted um, the, on the guards stop breaking the law or tried to break the rules themselves were either shot or um, punished in a very brutal way. Those who survived tend to be those who radically accepted the rules imposed on the guards by the guards and the people in power. And within those rules, then did their very best to work within the system so that they could be as effective as possible. Now, of course, that's a generalization and didn't apply to everybody. But I think it's a really useful way of um, thinking about things if we find ourselves stuck in systems that don't work for us. And there's a lot of them, isn't there? Sometimes by radically accepting the system as it is, it gives you a chance to be able to work within it. This is a better chance of surviving. So that's quite a large example to start with. What I'd really like you to do is have a look at something smaller, something that's a bit more manageable. So you will notice on worksheet nine, just going to double check that, yes, worksheet nine, um, there's questions one and two and they ask you to think of two things that are really very, very important for you to be able to radically accept and two things that are less important. I would suggest starting with the less important first and thinking of some smaller things that you have um, struggle to accept. So the example that I use is um, about cream eggs. So, cream eggs have been my favourite every year and they're only available for a limited amount of time which sort of makes them even more special. Now a few years ago I heard that there had been a change in the, the um, making of the cream eggs. I think it was to do with one company taking another company over. Now, obviously, I was really alarmed about this. Um, but I thought that couldn't possibly be. So I went ahead and bought my cream eggs as usual. I 
tried one. It tasted different. I was disappointed, but I thought, well, that can't be true. Maybe, maybe I, it was just a, a wrong cream egg. It was just a bit of an off cream egg. I'll buy some more. So I continually bought cream eggs and continually tested them out and was continually disappointed with the fact that actually I could not get the same taste that I got before. I searched for news that they would be bringing back the old format um, because I couldn't possibly believe that the cream eggs were going to be changed forever and that every Easter I would not be able to indulge in my love of cream eggs. I also didn't want to accept that the cream eggs were changed because that would bring me sadness. This was a tradition I'd had for quite some time and I really enjoyed it. After a period of time of eating an awful lot of eggs that I did not enjoy at all, I finally had to accept that actually they were going to be made this way. And that brought some sadness. Once I'd been able to accept that actually cream eggs were going to be as they were, then I started looking for the other chocolate that I could enjoy. Always a great experiment. So in being able to accept the reality as it was, I was then able to change some of my behaviours and seek out things that would be um, more effective for me. Would, I would still get some pleasure from being able to eat some really lovely chocolate and I wouldn't be constantly disappointed every time I got something. And there's a slight update to this story as well because um, this year I thought, oh, maybe I should try a cream egg again. And there, there's the thing with the taste buds, isn't it? Sometimes when you've had a long enough time away from something, when you go back to it, you see it in a different way. I had a cream egg and I really quite enjoyed it. So that's my example of not being able to accept something that is smallish and, and, um, and, and manageable. What have you got on your list? Have you got anything? that you can recall where you have been able to accept something. And if you have, how did you do it? Then look at putting down things on the other question about what is going to be really important for you to be able to accept? What are the two things that are most important? And then what I want you to do is I want you to just take one of those examples. Personally, I would start with the, the less important ones first. Take one example. Just think about what is that like when you are not accepting that painful fact? What does it feel like? Just notice how your body feels. Then notice what sort of thoughts come into your head when you think about that painful fact that you don't want to accept. Just jot them down. And then just get an idea of what sort of emotions come with that. Just noticing and being aware is one of the first steps to being able to turn our minds towards accepting something that's very painful that isn't going to change in the immediate future. We're going to look at that in a moment. So before what we were looking at is what are the stages of being able to radically accept something. 
And the first one is about turning the mind. What we're aiming to do is take a step back and look at what we're actually facing. In some ways, like looking at a fork in the road, in order to radically accept something, you have to turn your mind towards an, the acceptance path and away from the road. That's probably the one that we've been treading regularly of rejecting reality because it doesn't look the way we would like it to look. And that takes some effort. It also takes some awareness. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to engage our wise mind, trying to look at what situations are not going to change and how do we have to look at these differently. Turning the mind, this first stage, is choosing to accept. It puts us on the path. It's not the whole journey, but it puts us on the path. And it's the first stage. So what I want you to do is I want you to just pause and I want you to look at one of the less important areas that you, you know that you need to radically accept. If you were to take a breath, take a step back from the situation and look at what you need to accept. And then turn your mind towards that acceptance. What does it look like? What might you have to cope with if you choose to accept that? Because there will be skills for that. Remember, you're not saying that this is right. You're not condoning the reality. What you're acknowledging is this is the reality as it is. And I'm going to move my mind towards that road of acceptance. So let's have a look and see what happens next. You'll notice that I have put a picture of the, um, the Harry Potter um, film and it's the Chamber of Secrets with the Devil's Snare. So they um, they fall into this um, pit with the Devil's Snare in it and the Devil's Snare works by if somebody's moving it gets tighter and if somebody relaxes it releases. So is it similar to the monkey in the coconut shell? So in order to escape the devil's snare, you have to relax. And yet all your instincts are saying fight. I think it's a really good example of what happens for us when we don't want to accept something. We are fighting and fighting and fighting. And actually the way out is to accept what's actually happening and relax. So when we're turning our minds, Obviously, the first thing we need to do is we need to stop and take a step back and breathe. Because what we need to do is we need to observe. We need to observe what's happening. And we need to notice. We need to notice what feelings we're having. What we might be avoiding. And the thoughts that come into our head. So being able to just notice those thoughts is really useful. So you might say, do you know, I notice that inside I feel really tense, like there's a churning in my, in my chest. I notice that there's a feeling of anger or frustration. I'm feeling annoyed. And I notice that I'm having thoughts of, I don't want to do this. Why is this happening? Why me? Thoughts of it shouldn't be this way. Why can't they sort it out? Just by noticing those thoughts, 
you are increasing your awareness around the situation. And then what you do is you recognize that you have that fork in the road. And you go within yourself and you make an inner commitment to accept the reality as it is. I really don't want to underestimate how difficult this is, even with things that feel more manageable and less important. Radically accepting reality as it is when we really want it to be diff different is hard. And the other aspect of this is that we need to do it over and over again because it will pop back into your head the way you want reality to be. And then you need to go over it again. And this is really important because otherwise we just get stuck in a loop. And if we get stuck in a loop, there's not much we can do. There's not much we can change. So what we need to do is we need to develop a plan for catching ourselves in the future when we drift out of this acceptance and also use our cope ahead skills for how we might manage this. If you're working on radically accepting something that is very important for you to accept and equally difficult because of that, then there's going to be times in your life when that comes up again and, and feels like it's more in your face than at other times. And at those times, using the cope ahead skills of what am I likely to feel? What am I likely to want to do? And how can I cope with this? And imagine yourself coping with it in a different way can be a really useful skill. Because one of the emotions that comes up frequently that we've mentioned before when you're radically accepting something is sadness. If we're prepared on how we need to accept that sadness and go with it, then we're going to be in a much better position to deal with it. So have a think about what are the stages for you in accepting something? What do you notice when you're not accepting things? And how can you start practicing turning your mind? And then in the next session, we're going to build on this. So, as I have mentioned before, practice, practice, practice is the way to go. Starting with small things that you can radically accept, maybe even just interruptions that you have to radically accept, is a good starting point. The more you can do it, the more you're going to be able to do it. And it needs to be done deliberately. So you can't just sort of catch yourself doing it and think, oh, yeah, I did that. This is a deliberate practice using your handouts and your worksheets to help you. And remember, you can do it.